Oh, wow. It's all fancy and it tells you. So welcome, everybody. I'm going to try to put everybody on mute. That way, it just kind of stays, camera stays where it needs to go. It looks like Sue's audio is still connecting. iPhone is still connecting. But we're going to get into it, Lisa. So Lisa is a, a longtime member of ours. I believe I, I recognize your name the most because you're right there at the top of my accountability uh sheet so lisa has been with summer's fitness for a very long time and has uh i think much longer definitely much longer than me and I, probably from the beginning of when summer first started her business and practice so i have a few questions for you lisa but why don't we first just go ahead and talk a little bit about you and what's your history how long exactly have you been at summer's fitness and things along those lines um, I actually don't remember, but it has been a lot of years. Um, <laughs> summer says 15 or 17, something like that. So I know it was, um, where kids were really small and summer was working at the green Y and for our anniversary gift, Kevin said, let's start taking some personal training lessons with summer because he had heard good things about her. So then throughout the years, I followed her everywhere. <laughs> Very cool. So you kind of, like, before she was even, like, really, like, established as a business owner, she was kind of, like, doing her own thing on the side, different places, and you kind of just f heard about her, started out, and then where she went, you kind of went because you enjoyed what was happening and what she had to offer. Yep, correct. That's very cool. So I know, Lisa, we have passings and we talk here and there and from the stuff that I've gathered and picked up along the way that you are an ex-athlete, which I am also. And, and that's kind of what got me into the whole fitness world. And then that was kind of how I maintained after like college, it kind of set, it put me on in the right mindset to continue a fit, fitness journey because it was kind of ingrained in me so early on. So I'll let you take it over from here and tell us if what is your athletic background, what kind of uh, prompted you to get into fitness before you kind of even met Summer, and then what has kept you on track along the way? So my my um, my dad was very athletic. He was a um, like a three time player. So I guess we all five kids of us got some kind of athletic gene. Okay, very good. So we're always doing something athletic growing up. So as soon as sports were available, I think in seventh grade, um, I started doing basketball and volleyball. Um, and I guess softball and track, whatever, all of them. You know, back then, when I was in high school, you could do three sports and it wouldn't matter. So I was always a three sport athlete and then did get a scholarship to play volleyball at a D one school. So I guess, um, that's just always kind of been part of our life maybe. So with, with, uh, and even back then in college, you don't, you didn't train as much as they do now. Um, but I still had some kind of self motivation always within me. So I would do a lot more than I had to. Yeah. And I guess it just, it just stuck with me. Um, after college, I would still train and play volleyball and, uh, you know, not that of my 57 years, I've done fitness every day, but I have taken breaks and, you know, done different things. I've, I, and then after college, I played a lot of tennis. So that, that um, kind of kept me in shape too. But I've always had like some kind of drive to do cardio or weight training. Very cool. So you, you've been involved in athletics for quite some time then, right from the very beginning. So you're saying having that mentality and having that work ethic is kind of what kept that internal drive going for you to maintain uh, along the way 
it's always been kind of been there just kind of pushing you forward correct yeah yeah i mean i don't know i think about when i can finally not train <laughs> <laughs> i don't think that's gonna happen lisa we you're just gonna you're gonna keep training and i like it that's awesome so you said yeah, I mean, go ahead I just was, I mean, I've always been, I guess, very weight conscious and, and even, you know, the trials and tribulations of growing up, uh, you know, with girl and having weight issues. I mean, I was never my dog, my dad, you know, we had, he was six, two. So we had tall, tall in our family also, but you know, that was always there too. So that was a driving force as well. Okay. So you had the, the, the athletics ingrained in you, but then also there's this, an, an outside factor that kind of motivated you kind of like self image wise, but also I'm sure as an athlete, you want to maintain a healthy lifestyle. So that that's probably a driving factor as well. Weight loss, maintaining and uh, staying healthy. Speaking of maintaining and being healthy, you said you told me 15, 17 years, somewhere along those lines. And I know you've taken breaks along the way and breaks are great because I know I've been taking a break lately and focusing a lot on stretching. But I also know there's times where I've taken unhealthy breaks where I've taken a little bit too far of a break from the gym and I've always kind of had a hard time jumping back into it. So on those breaks, were they more for recovery breaks? or uh, were they injury related? And if those breaks took too long, how did you re-engage yourself to get back on track to maintain? So the, yeah, so the breaks weren't really injury related. It was more probably busy. You know, mm -hmm. I had a full-time job, three raising three kids. Um, they were, once they got to the athletic age, they were involved in three sports. So I think, there there were no injury breaks um yeah it was just more my life got a little busy and i just couldn't fit it in i, I mean i think my longest break was probably a couple months three three four months maybe um and that's just from summers i mean i guess i always ran and played tennis and that kind of stuff so it, you know it was just going to summers for three times a week or whatever it was but yeah it was more so that Anytime I had an injury, um, I still worked out just a different way. Perfect. Oh, so, well, and, and I've done this too, along the way, understanding my body and how it responds to different things. Like, so what you're saying is when you have an injury, don't push the injury, but find a way to keep pushing forward while you cater to the injury and also give it the recovery that it needs. So basically you, knowing yourself and what type of injury you had, you're saying to maintain your fitness routine, you would still go do work, but you'd make it work for you in, in the situation that you were dealing with at the time. So rather than taking a break, you found a way to maintain and keep pushing forward, even if there's a little adversity, whether it be an injury or even like just what you said, life being a full-time working mother of three i mean i have a hard time just maintaining my routine and it's just me so congratulations to you and all the women out there or even dads out there that have to not only fend for themselves but their young ones but also stay on track for their well-being as as well so that's super cool yeah and getting getting like starting up again after a two or three month break um i guess i didn't find it very challenging or hard it just um, you know, it's just a matter of now I, I'm kind of controlling again, or, you know, have some kind of control or have more time, um, to, to work out. So yeah, that wasn't difficult. Very good. But it sounds like no matter it, like your body may have taken a break from the gym, but your work ethic somehow evolved to where fitness was involved in your life but you just may not be have kept the set, same routine you kept your body maintained you kept your well-being and mind health maintained but you might switch up your environments or if you take a break but it's not taking a break 
from working out is taking a break from one stressor and maybe switching up your routine a little bit. And that's a great way to also gain better results. Part of uh, get improving your body along the way is to switch up the type of stressors. So that's why at summers we're always trying to find different ways to challenge, doing different formats and things like that. So even when you stepped away from the gym, you weren't stepping away from fitness. You were just changing your environment a little bit. And, uh, but you always get back to your core and come back to the gym and keep pushing forward. So is it safe to say that like your foundation is the gym and you work your life around it, but it seems like it's always been the one thing you came back to and maintain and keep you on track? Um, yeah, I would say that. Yeah. I mean, I don't love lifting weights. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I hear you on that one. <laughs> or, or, or training, but you know, it's something that I feel I need to do for my body and my mind. Yeah, very good. And that, that's, I mean, that's kind of what the, the whole fitness thing. That's why I maintain my fitness. And as I start to age and get up is you keep the same, you keep on track but you might change your focus. I mean, when I was younger, it was all about looking good. Like you were talking about when you're younger, the, the image of yourself, your self image. But then you've reached a certain point when it's not about anybody else. It's truly about you and your health. And you don't do it for the motivating factors of look. And yeah, obviously those are enticing, but I feel like as I get into an old, uh, different demographic that my focus has changed to actually how my body feels and how healthy I feel rather than how good I look in a mirror. So, I mean, that's great that you say, and yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't say, yeah, I want to go lift weights. It's kind of like I do that because I know what it's going to do for me in the long run. And if you look at it like that, that's also another great way to stay fit and stay on track that you can't look at it as you're just going to go and do it. Then you're going to get in shape and then you can live your life. It's something that you have to stick with, stay on track and maintain it as a lifestyle. And don't try to think of it as like, I'm going to work out because I like to work out. If that's you, that's great. But if you find that that's a hard place to motivate yourself, try to look at the, the after effect of what it's truly going to do for you. So that was a great key point that you brought up, Lisa, with your your mind and your body, just keeping it healthy. So why don't we go into, we'll finish it out with a little, uh, how has summer helped, summer's fitness helped you stay on track and motivated along the way? Um, I think just the variety. So when, when we first started with summer, she did a lot more personal training, strength and conditioning type. Um, so, so, so that was my regimen and that was actually only, you know, two or three times a week. Um, but there was a lot of variety in those sessions. And then just maybe five years ago or something like that, I decided just to do all boot camp. Um, and so that, that I think was a good switch. So, um, I just think the variety of what she has to offer and, um, she's always had like a nice set of weights, always kept the gym clean. Yeah. Um, you know, it was very, she's very disciplined in how she wants to run things, which is nice. I know some people it bothers, but you know, I think that's a good quality, um, so, yeah, I think that's the main thing, just the variety, just, um, you know, it's great that the boot camps have different um, levels and you can push yourself as much as you want and as little as you want. Uh, and, and it kind of has combined the strength training or weights into, you know, boot camp type style. So you're not feeling like you're lifting weights all the time. Yeah. And yeah, the, the structure of it too is key too is how we have like, uh, like you said, Monday, Wednesday and Fridays are more weight oriented. And then we cater the cardio to the Tuesday and flexibility on Thursdays and Saturdays. So 
it's a good switch and a lot of people and i used to feel bad about myself when i wouldn't push really really hard like if i you know i thought the way to go is like five days a week six days a week push myself to the max but there's that fine line between overtraining and overreaching you want to overreach to a uh gain goals but if you get to a point where you reach too far that's when you start to actually move backwards by doing too much so that's why she always says that magic number like you said is that three to four times a week but you can also switch up the different type of things that you do whether it be the cardio days uh more of the weightlifting days and you can kind of cater your routine to what your goals are if you're that person like you said are to gain a little bit more muscle mass and go for that bulkier look i mean you can focus on the weight days if you want to be that person maybe have a little bit more core and lean down you can go a little bit more into the cardio days so not only is it a good split for intensity and recovery but it's also a good split to you can cater it to your routine to make it meet your goals and that's super key and that's a great point that you brought up as well um there's something else oh and discipline talking about discipline and having a good quality i think the reason why some are so successful and she stays on track is because kind of like we're always looking for a maintain or stay on track in fitness i think that's how our mind works with business and that's probably why she has such a long longevity but also has such a great community that she's gathered along the way so discipline you're right is an excellent quality and when it comes to discipline, that's something that we should all try to implement into our worlds. If it's important to us, business is important, your life, your, uh, your, what is it? Your way of living or how you live is important, but your fitness and health is important as well. And when it comes to determination and discipline, those are areas where you should apply it. And Lisa, you've definitely applied it. And I think you sharing your story has also, it has for me, reminded me on how important discipline is and always remind yourself, you can take a break, but even a break isn't just laying around doing nothing. It's keeping your body active, keeping your body moving forward. So when your life does allow, or when you can find that discipline to make it back to the gym, it's, you're, you're able to get back on track with your main routine but it's not a lot of effort like where you see some people where they take that bad break, the one I was talking about. And when you try to get back into it, one, it's hard, hard because I mean, and I, and I gather that there's a lot of people dealing with this now after the whole pandemic that just walking back to the door can be hard, but the hard part is starting over. Uh, overcoming goals and hurdles that you've already overcome. That can be super discouraging when last year you're in shape, all is good, you can run around like crazy, but then life happens, gets in the way, you weren't able to maintain. When you head back, I mean, boot camp was hard before, it can be hard, but it can be catered to all different levels, but it's always easier to stay on track and maintain rather than kind of lose what you've gained and then try to reestablish yourself because it's discouraging the fact that you're reaching goals that you've already reached, but it can just be very hard on the body to jump back into a world like that. But I don't want people out there to be scared of that because like you said, there's different levels, there's different offers. We have the ability to adapt to anybody's needs. And like you said, whether you have an injury now, whether you have an injury in the past, it still is an ailment to you. We can make the boot camps and the movements work for you, just like you talked about, Lisa, when you had your injuries. You didn't stop, you kept moving forward, but you made it work in one way or another. And that's how, what we kind of pride ourselves on is no matter what level you're coming in at, no matter what your history is like with fitness, no matter what injuries or even uh illnesses that you face diabetes things along those lines we have a way to make it work for you to get you on track to where you want to be so i just want to thank you lisa for one jumping on 
and sharing all this cool stuff with us, but also with a little bit of the short notice, you kind of saved the day and showed up. And I think I, we should call this like a, uh, I want to call it veterans hot veteran member highlight. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I think that. Bart and I are, are uh, right up there. Yeah. We'll have to get Bart. We'll have to catch Bart on another day. I think he had prior engagements, but I'm glad it all worked out and we threw it all together. We have, uh, I believe like six or seven people on and now's a great time if you don't mind lisa open it up to a few questions maybe there's some newer members or obviously a member that hasn't been around as long as you because you're the you're the you're the main member you're the first one you're on the top of my list maybe they have some questions for you on how to stay on track how to overcome things would you be open to answering a few questions if we have a few sure cool so uh i got you guys on the top board it looks like one person still connect. If you guys have a question, you can guys go ahead and unmute yourself or throw up a hand and I can do that because I believe I have the capability of that. Sue, looks like Sue has a question. Hi. She's coming to us from San Diego. Yeah. There can we you, go. Can you hear me? No, San Francisco, yeah. San Diego. Uh, has anybody had to make a choice between sleep and working out? I don't think that should be. Has anybody had to make do. a choice between sleep and working out? Why don't we let Not Lisa, me. Lisa is our, our guest, so I'm going to let her feel that one, see what she has to say. Uh, no, but if, it, if I had a choice, I would do sleep before working out. And now, Lisa, why Ooh. would you say that? Um, because they say that sleep is very important for you. So. So I guess, I guess it's better for me to have the sleep and then figure out a, a way to work around the sleep schedule, a way to work into my workout. So I think, Sue, Lisa made a great point there that sleep is important. What they say is very important, but you got to also think it from the perspective of what's the point of working out is to exert energy in, in, in turn, that energy that you're exerting are giving you results, right? Those results that you receive only come your way when you have the proper recovery. So if you're talking about taking away sleep, you're replacing working out with sleep. One, you're not getting an effective workout because you're tired. You don't have the energy drive for an effective workout. And if you're taking that sleep away, that means those results that come from recovery aren't gonna be as effective or as great. So I would say maybe some days, so, let me rephrase this a little bit because every day that I wake up to go work out, I'm tired and I want to go back to sleep. So I can't have that mentality all the time. So you, sometimes you have to push through tired to get the work done. But when it comes to losing out on the proper recovery and sleep that your body needs to uh, have better feeling, pushing harder, better workouts and the recovery, I know for a while there, I was pushing myself like you were, Sue. And I mean, we see it on each other's faces every Friday. I'm like, hey, Sue, you're the first person I talk to. She, uh, she's the first person I talk to. So I would say, yeah, sometimes you got to push through tired to get the workout in. After a long day of work, you don't feel like necessarily going in for a workout, but you have to. But I wouldn't make it a practice where if you are going to have a normal sleep time and then say, well, I haven't got a workout in, in a couple of days, I, I wouldn't substitute sleep with working out is what I'm saying. Cause that's, that's super important recovery and rest. I pushed like you did Sue. And I, I came to a point where I crashed for like 10 hours, slept from one o'clock till 10 o'clock at night or you don't want to do that. You don't want to push because they talk about stressors working out stressor. That's what you're doing. You're stressing your body out. They say you got to have an adequate amount of stress to gain positive uh, results. But if you have a coffee cup, your stressor cup, you want that filled to the top. And that's where you're capped off at, if you will, for gains. If you add too much stressor, we're not just talking about workout stress. We're talking about life stress. We're talking about family stress. We're talking about relationship stress, work stress. 
then working out stress. With all that stress, you only want to be up to the brim. If you get to the point where you start overflowing, that's when you get into the overreaching, overtraining, and you actually start to do detrimental effects to your body that actually revert you back. And I was like that before where I was working out two times a day, just a crazy man. But I got to the point where I was metabolizing my own muscle because I thought more was better, but more was be wasn't just not better it was also unhealthy so i would say sue think about you know, that <laughs> decision to make think about what your well-being your overall well-being will benefit from either the workout or the sleep and then make your informed decision yeah so my last comment is i think you just shouldn't mistake intensity for um discipline like you know those are two completely different things. Like you said, two to three really good workouts with enough sleep is the goal, not like you said, twice a day workouts and thinking well, that that oh, means that you're you more. Mean. So discipline can't, don't confuse discipline with intensity because if you're disciplined six days a week, but you're going in there, texting on your phone, doing a little foot taps and things like that, like not that foot taps aren't good, but you can, you're talking about quality work over quantity, discipline versus mm -hmm. uh, intensity. If you can have five intense days of working out and the other days take off, sleep, have active rest that like Lisa's talking about, whether it be running, swimming, whatever it may be, I think you have a better ability to get the results that you want from that rather than being tired six days a week, but getting six workouts in. So that's a great that's a great perspective to look at it from that if you're starting to feel bad about yourself because you're not getting the quantity of work in that you want feel better about yourself by making sure the quality of work that you put in is top notch you know what i mean sue so uh, that's awesome oh you just made me realize some stuff thank you sue is there is there anybody else i would like to ask lisa a question debbie I don't have a question, but I just kind of wanted to weigh in on that. It's, it's different for you to wake up and say, oh, I don't feel like working out today versus I'm planning on not working out today because I need to rest. Yes. Great point because everybody has that groggy get out of bed feeling. So you, you're finding that you have to find the difference between rest and an excuse. When you find the appropriate rest, but don't start using it as a crutch or an excuse not to go. And if you've made up your mind the night before that you're going to a bed at a decent time and you're waking up to go work out, when you wake up and say, I'm not going to work out, you know it's not because of the lack of sleep. You put that in you're taking the easy way out and you're just using it as a excuse saying you're tired. But on the same front, if you're planning your rest, if you say, hey, this day, I know I put the good work in, I'm going to bed at a decent time, but I'm making up my mind to not work out or to go for a walk or you know, play in the backyard with the kids or whatever it may be, you're still being active, but you're giving your body a little bit of rest and uh, you plan it out so it's not now an excuse. It's something that you meant to do. And I think that's a fine line people also got to walk too. So that's a great point, Debbie. Yeah. So Sue, I'm giving you, you're the doctor, but I'm going to give you a prescription. To take a break every once in a while. Or plan your rest. Plan your rest. Though. Oh yeah, I'm on I'm on vacation next. Yeah, I'm on vacation next week, so I have to. I'm, I'm just going to be in Chicago, but you know, it's hard. I tried to zoom in one time, and it's too hard. Are well, you doing it right now, Sue? I hear you. Mm -hmm. but hey, get, yeah, give your body a rest. Go enjoy life. I mean, at the end of the day, why are we all doing this? Why are we working on our health, quality of life, and longevity of life? To do what? We're not doing it because we love to lift weights and go lift weights, like Lisa said. We're you're doing it 
for another reason. And when you feel bad on those days while you're not working out or you're having a piece of cake, remember why you're doing it. You're not doing it for the workout. You're doing it so you can enjoy what you're doing at that very moment. And don't get that confused with go work out so you can eat like garbage all the time. It's no, you go work out so you can enjoy the good things in life in moderation with a little of discipline like we talked about, Sue. That's awesome. Lisa may not like to lift weights, but look at her shoulders. She's got great <laughs> shoulders. There it is, yeah. It's that volleyball set and keeping those arms up, slamming it down. Speaking of slam down, this interview went great. Lisa slammed this interview. She knocked it out of the park. And uh, I'm going to give one more opportunity for questions. If not, we're going to send Lisa on her way and thank her for her time. Uh, I think this is great. This is super. All good, Todd. All good, Lisa. Keep those shoulders looking good. I think a little bit of moving mountain climbers and backwards bear crawls might have a little something to do with that too. Those things will get you. Oh, walkout push-ups too. Those drive backs. Well, thank you guys for everybody tuning on in. Thank you for bringing in the questions. Thank you, Lisa, for being one of our most longtime committed members. Uh, but also thank you for sharing a little bit of your story and your journey with us today. Always here, and that's another thing about great community is everybody has their own journey, everybody has their own story, but there can be a little motivation from everybody's world. I mean, hearing stuff about you motivates me, hearing things about other people's situations or struggles or barriers that they have overcome have motivated me in my life. And hopefully a community like this does the same for you guys. And uh, thank you very much, Lisa. And we're gonna we're gonna call it. But thank you for so much hanging out with us. Yep. Yep. Sure thing, Todd. All right, Lisa and everybody Thanks, else. Uh, thanks, Lisa. Thank Sue, you. Renee. Thank you. iPhone that's been connected. Jen, good to see you guys. Have a great day and keep that motivation going strong. Oh yeah. Okay.